If you're frugal, there's things that you do and things other people notice. Consider this your frugal quiz. We did some studying and we came up with 40 items of which to base whether you're frugal or not on. And we're going to keep score here in our little studio location. But before we get going, if you don't know us, I'm Larry and this is... Phil. Phil. This is my youngest son, Phil. He's sitting in for Hope tonight. Isn't that wonderful? And we're from Under the Median where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. I'll be reading from a list that Hope compiled on frugal points, and between Philip and I, we'll determine whether we do these as a family or not, and do these add up enough to make our family a frugal family. So, Philip, let's go with the very first point here. The first one is, you consider grocery shopping a competitive sport and proudly tell everyone about the total of mount that you saved. Do you think we do this? Oh yeah, we do this all the time. <laughs> that it is kind of a point of adventure when we go out to the grocery store to see how good we can do on the items that they have offering for sale or on special aisles. Number two, your idea of a splurge is buying the store brand cereal instead of the generic one. Do you think we do this? Yeah, a, a little bit. I, I think I think the closest we've gotten is maybe getting like actual Raisin Bran or actual Cheerios rather than the generic brand from Aldi's. Boy, I can't remember the last time we did that. Most of the time we <laughs> yeah. buy the Melville brand from Aldi's and those are really cheap. We don't really eat a lot of cereal. We don't eat cereal for breakfast. Mm -hmm. We eat either oatmeal or cream of wheat, which we think are actually better than eating cereal. But it's nice on a Sunday night, isn't it, to have a bowl of cereal yeah. just as fun or to have some as a snack food. Number three, you reuse tea bags until they resemble ancient artifacts. <laughs> I don't I don't think we've done that too much. I, I don't know. We're, we haven't been crazy tea drinkers, but I don't think we've reused tea bags a ton. I, I don't reuse them at all. Once yeah. I have tea out of a tea bag, I'm done. I want full strength, and that's that. Now, yeah. Hope and Dan are different. They will reuse and reuse and reuse until that tea bag has nothing left of it. But that's, that's for them. I'm not like that. I'll drink some tea and then I'm done. Uh, number four, buying in bulk makes you feel like you've won the lottery. What do you think about that one? Oh, yeah. We find all kinds of different things when we go to the, the Amish place in Cuba. It's all the time we find different things. If you add up what we save in buying, let's say, oatmeal in bulk compared to what it costs new, it's a major amount of savings. Oh, yeah. Because a big bag, a big 50-pound bag, will only cost about $26. Mm -hmm. And when you add up what 50 pounds would cost you if you went to the store and bought it just off the shelf one at a time, it would be at least double that amount. So we really like buying in bulk. And it is a little bit like hitting the lottery for us. We feel pretty good about that one. So that one... Definitely a yes. Your wardrobe is a collection of hand-me-downs, thrift store finds, and garments from a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that almost all of my wardrobe consists of that. In fact, I don't think I've ever bought a piece of clothing new before. I would feel like ripped off if I bought a lot of clothing new. Yeah. Now, I have some clothing that goes way back even more than a decade. I have a jacket. It's a yellow windbreaker from the 1970s. I bought it shortly after I graduated from high school. And no. I still have it and I still wear it when I'm riding my bike in the spring. So there are some, just some pieces of clothing that last a long time. Yeah. I like it when jackets last a long time too. I like a jacket to last for at least 20 or 30 years. As long as you're not too hard on them, you keep them clean, you, you keep them neat, they'll last a long time. There's no point in replacing that anytime too soon. You've mastered the art of DIY repairs with duct tape as your trusty sidekick. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think we've used that quite as much. I think more than anything, we've used like we've used bumper stickers a couple times. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we had to... we, we've used bumper stickers a couple of times. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's so true. I've uh, I've accidentally backed the car into something on the, the Crown Vic years and years ago. We had a Crown Vic. And, and it scratched the bumper a little bit. And it was right in a place where a bumper sticker would go just perfectly. So I put uh, uh, an FM radio bumper sticker right over the blemish. And by golly, it looked just as good as new. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we don't do, I'm not a big user of duct tape. I'm not into duct tape. But I, uh, I will use glue. Uh, I like to glue things together. But I use it appropriately to do the job that it's intended to do. I don't try to use it for everything. So yeah. we're not big duct, duct tape people per se. So yeah. I'd have to say no, literally, to say literally no on that one. We're, we don't really use duct tape as a repair item. Your version of a luxury vacation involves camping in the backyard. I think that James and John did this a lot more than I and Dan did. Yeah. Uh, I think I've maybe done it once, but it, I definitely wouldn't call it luxury vacation. No. I, th I think the Smoky Mountains is that calling was, your name again. That was a good vacation, and we need to go back there. <laughs> yeah. And I would love to take you guys out to Colorado sometime. Yeah. That was one of my favorite states to go visit. There's so much to see there, so much natural beauty that we just don't have in our backyard. Not quite. <laughs> no. Uh, so I would say no to that one. We definitely don't spend luxury vacations in our backyard. Yeah. Free samples at Sam's are the highlight of your Saturday afternoon. Oh, man. You go at the perfect time. You don't even need to get lunch when you get home. That's right. Yeah, we'll go there and we'll use that as our lunch. Yeah. And we go there to buy things. We don't, we're not just going there for lunch. But now I don't, I don't think they've had as many samples lately no. as they used to have. They used to have about nine or ten samples. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put them all throughout the store. So you, if you're into the samples, you're going to get around to the whole store and find some things to purchase. That's their idea of having those items that are uh, offered for tasting. Uh, your kitchen is decorated with drying, washed, plastic, Ziploc bags. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely true. When you when you finish washing the dishes, you'll usually come down and see a Ziploc bag on the faucet from time yeah, to time. Yeah, we put them over the faucet or we put them over the water container. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Hope got me onto that. I didn't used to collect Ziploc bags at all. I would throw them out once they're done. You know, one and done is what I yeah, figured. Yeah. Hope was the one that got me into washing and saving those. And if you're talking about Ziploc freezer bags, those are pretty thick and they're well made. Mm -hmm. They'll handle quite a few washes before they're worn out. So, yep, we'll use them until they actually rip or they have a little tear in them. And only then do we throw those things out. Retail therapy. To you, that means strolling through the clearance aisle. Uh, maybe... I, I think that mom does a lot of this. This would be a yes for mom. For mom sure. does a lot of this. I feel like I, I you, we're, we're both let more of the, we go into a store to get what we need to get and you then bet. we go out. You bet. Yeah. I, I like to go in with my list, conquer what's on the list, pay for it, and I'm done. I, I don't like spending any time shopping. Now, yeah. Hope will go in and she'll find three areas in Kroger that has clearance items. And she has to go to all three of them, no matter when she shops, and go through everything and make sure there's nothing there that's going to escape the clearance price from her cart. Your idea of a gourmet meal is anything you can cook using leftovers. I definitely, we've definitely done this from time to time. Yeah, we'll be like, what are we having for supper? Oh, we're having leftovers. <laughs> And I would say for sure we eat our leftovers. We, oh, yeah. we we make enough food so that it's extra, and we'll use leftovers for the next meal. Mm -hmm. But we also like to go through the back of the uh, the pantry and look through everything there, make sure we've used everything up, make sure we used everything up in the refrigerator, and hope we'll put a lot of things together and make a really mm -hmm. good meal. I mean, they're they're good, so I don't mind doing that at all. I would say yes to this one. We definitely take our leftovers and repurpose them into a new meal. The words sale and discount have a magical effect on your mood. <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely true. Uh, when, whenever, whenever that's mentioned, it's always like, 
Oh, so what was the actual price? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. If you feel like you're getting a better price on an item than what they normally sell for, it's like you're winning at something. You're, you're, you're getting ahead. It's a way to make some ground on something and save money. So we always like it and feel better if we can get something on sale or on a discount. Your friends know not to ask you to split the bill evenly at restaurants. What would you say to that one? I mean, I've been to restaurants so, uh, so, so we just don't go out to eat that much. Mm -hmm. We just really don't go out to eat. Nope. Nope. I, I don't know if that has a direct effect on our family just because we may maybe twice a year. No, and then the other thing about splitting the bill evenly with friends, we usually order the things that don't cost a lot off mm -hmm. of the... Uh, off the menu anyway. In fact, we don't usually order soda or coffee. We'll just drink water yeah. if we go out to eat. And frankly, with our, our vegan lifestyle, we really don't enjoy eating out that much. There aren't that many places that we can go and get a really no. good meal. We usually go out to eat if we get a some kind of a, a, um, a card that will pay for it or we, mm -hmm. we get something from maybe as a gift. Somebody's given us uh, some some money to go out to eat on, and we go out as a family. But we don't split it with other people. Uh, I've never split my ticket with other people that I've gone out to eat with. Mm -hmm. I pay for what I buy, and they pay for what they purchase. Uh, okay, so I would say no on this one. You've calculated the cost per use of every item you own. Oh, absolutely. We've done this so much. Yes. Yeah, I do that a lot with my car. I want to keep the cost of driving my car down to the minimal. So I'll I'll check out to see how much does it cost to take Philip to work. It's 10 miles one direction to take Philip to work. So if I take him to work and come back home and then pick him up, I've driven 40 miles. So don't I check every time about what mileage yep. I'm getting with each trip? And I make sure that I'm getting the best mileage that I can. We got 40 miles to the gallon in the Honda Fit today. Yeah. And in colder weather, it's really hard to get good mileage. So we felt like we really won. And that gives you a good feeling, mm -hmm. you know, when you can kind of beat the system, save a little bit of money doing that. And the other thing that we save money at on this same idea is with electricity. We try to use items that don't use that much electricity and try to save that way. Don't put a lot of lights on in a room. Use the smallest TV possible, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we use thermoses for the coffee. That way you're not heating the coffee up uh, every time you want a cup of coffee. There's just lots of things you can do to save money. Yeah. And I think that makes us frugal. So that one I would say absolutely yes. Your phone is a relic because you refuse to upgrade until it's absolutely necessary. What would you say to that one, Phil? Uh, I'd say that's uh, pretty accurate, yeah. This is our basement phone, people. <laughs> I kid you not. And it works perfectly. You know what's nice about this phone? It never runs low on batteries. Yeah. And it's always plugged in. And we always know where it's at because it has to be kept in one place. So there are some advantages about these old relics of the past. Now, do we have different kinds of phones besides this? Yeah, but I mean, when you're downstairs, you certainly can't miss when this one's ringing. You sure can. <laughs> no, we have cell phones. We do have newer phones, though, including yeah. cell phones and some others around the house that are much more portable than this one. But it's fun having this old relic yeah. around. You get a sense of accomplishment when finding loose change in your couch cushions. Yeah. Do you, do you I think mean, we find loose change in the couch, couch cushions? I don't know if it's the couch cushions, but definitely when we're like out on a walk or something oh, and we yes. find, or like walking around in the parking lot of a place and we find something, it's definitely yes. accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of nice because it's unexpected. A lot of times I'll find loose change in the car. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be where you, where you put a, uh, like your, your coffee cup holders. There'll be maybe a quarter sitting there or a nickel or dime. Now we do keep quarters in the car because at Aldi's you have to use a quarter in order to get one of their carts out. You have to put a quarter in to pull the cart out and take it into the store. So we do del deliberately keep change in the car for that reason. But sometimes it's nice to find extra change. It's yeah. like, it's like a gift, you know, a little gift that you have coming to you. You've turned off lights in your house to save on electricity, even if it means navigating in the dark. 
I don't know if navigating in the dark is something we do. Well, I know Dan does that. Dan does that a Dan, little bit. Dan does that. He does I, keep the lights way down. Uh, but we definitely turn a light on when we're on in a room, though. Yeah. To move around and stuff. I might put a minimal amount of lights on, so it's just enough to maybe light up the area. The problem with Hope's broken arm, you know, Hope broke her arm uh, about, uh, about two weeks ago now by the time you see this video. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was because of not enough lighting in the area that she was walking through. Unfortunately, though, the sun had gone down and our light switches aren't near the doorways in the basement where we were editing the video. She went to get the hard drive, went out, the room was dark, and she tripped and fell. So next time, we'll light that up. Yeah. It's not worth having your house darkened even just to save a little bit of money if somebody's going to get hurt badly. That's definitely not an advantage. So I would say no to this one. Uh, we, don't, we don't keep the house dark in order to save money on electricity. Your idea of a fancy coffee is brewing it at home in your mismatched mugs. <laughs> what do you think of that? Um, yeah, we we definitely always brew our stuff at home. Cause, I mean, it's mm -hmm. by the time you get around to getting a coffee every day at Starbucks, it's not worth it. I think the coffee is just as good brewing it at home. As yeah. long as you have the, the, a good coffee mix, it will taste as good as it did at the restaurant. And I don't care about the mix mismatched mugs. There, yeah. I, I, I like them. I like what we have in our mug supply. It's kind of fun. I have my favorite one. This is one of my favorites here. And there's no other to it. This is the only one like it. So that's there's mm -hmm. no match for that mug. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't bother us at all. I would rather save the money than go to the store and spend like $5 on yeah. a cup of coffee. Oh my gosh, who can afford that? We can't. So I would say yes, definitely to this one. Receiving a free pin makes your day and you guard it like treasure. What do you think of that? Like, like if you go out to a place where there's a lot of meetings and different things and they give away free pins, what do you, what do you think about that possibility? Uh, I'll just say this. We've gotten a lot of pens over the years. <laughs> I think all I think all of the pens in our house are free pens. This is one to our bank. Yeah. That, that has our bank, the name of our bank on that one. Uh, I would say all of the pens in our house are free yeah. pens. We don't. When's the last time we bought a pen? I can't remember. I don't think I've ever seen us buy pens in our lifetime. No, or and my we, lifetime. And we don't. And we get a, a plethora of free pens. So it makes sense to get free pens and keep them and use them. Yeah. So yes to that one for sure. <clears throat> You've hosted potluck dinners because sharing the cost is a the frugal way to feast. What do you think of that? I don't I don't think so. I I don't I don't really think we've hosted many potluck dinners to be honest. We haven't. We yeah. Haven't. Um, but we have had potluck dinners with our friends where yeah. we've met uh, with Dave and Donna and John and Linda at their mm -hmm. house and we've all bought food. And I guess you could call that a potluck. We we decided ahead of time which what we you know what each person was going to bring whether they were going to bring a salad or or bring a sandwich or whatever it was. So, uh and I would say that's good. By sharing the food, you do save some money. That isn't our point in doing it, though. We're not doing it to save money. We're, no. we're doing it to be friends and to have fun. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that's our point in doing it. But uh, I don't think I would really call, call that a frugal thing. But it is a lot cheaper than eating out. Mm -hmm. So I guess in that line of thinking, it is frugal. And we could say yes to it, even though we really don't practice that for the sake of saving money. We're on 21. Your holiday decorations are a mix of handmade crafts and items from the dollar store. What do you think of what we have for our Christmas decorations? Yeah, I think the good portion of them is stuff that's handmade and stuff from the dollar store. Or from garage sales and yeah. estate sales. A lot of our uh, ornaments on our tree go clear back to the 50s and 40s. Yep. And I have some ornaments that go back to my childhood that mm. I've kept from when I was a kid. I have just a couple of things still left from those days. And they mean a lot to me. Those mean more to me than anything you could buy new anyway. So I'd say, yes, we definitely have items that are used that we decorate with. I don't think we go to the dollar store too much for these. I can't Not remember. Really, no. I can't remember going to the dollar store. This reminds me of our first disagreement when Hope and I were first married. My mom bought us a, a three foot Christmas tree and we had no money. 
And Hope was going to put the tree up, put it on the stand, and just leave it. It had no lights. It had no ornaments. And I said, I'm going to go get ornaments and lights. So I went and bought <laughs> silver and gold ornaments and a, a light, a string of lights to go around it. And I just did it. I went out and bought it and put mm -hmm. it on there because uh, I just didn't want to have that without decoration. So oh, yeah. that was our only tree for several years. For about, I don't know, five or six years, that was our, our Christmas tree, a little, little three-foot uh, tree. Uh, you know the exact price of every item in your grocery cart before reaching the checkout. Every time. Yes. We're always calculating as we're going along. So I have this yep. much left in my budget for the month. This is how much I'm spending. means I'm going to have this much amount left. <laughs> Every time we go shopping, we're always calculating along the way. Exactly. Uh, Hope will tell us what we have for that trip. Mm -hmm. And then she'll make you keep track and add it up on your calculator. If, yep. you're, if you're with her or if I'm with her, she makes me do it. And that way we don't go over our budget. We don't want to go over the, uh, especially the food budget. It's so easy to go over on the food budget. Mm -hmm. um, number 23, you've turned your thermostat down so low that your friends think your home doubles <laughs> as a freezer. <laughs> well, yeah, we keep it. We keep it pretty low. One of, one of my friends, when he was staying here, he was like, Oh, I, I was talking to him the other day, and he's like, oh, uh, Dad was having me uh, turn up the thermostat. He was like, oh, up from 52? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do keep it pretty cool at night. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, we're keeping it warm because Hope and I are both uh, sleeping in separate beds upstairs with her broken arm, I, and then she's out in the living room. I am keeping it warmer for her because I don't yeah. want her to get cold. So we're running it at 68 right now. Yeah. We run it at 65 during the day. And at night, 62. We yeah. lower it down to 62 to save a little money. Then you get into your nice warm bedding uh, and you stay pretty warm. Philip has a really good way to stay warm. How do you stay warm in your room? Uh, well, it helps that my room is directly above the furnace. That does help. That that keeps your room quite a bit warmer. Also, and my computer is in there and that lets off quite a bit of heat. So yeah. a lot of times they'll come in my room and she's like, holy cow, it's warm in their room. Can I move in? <laughs> That is right. Now, your computer is something you built. So you mm -hmm. saved some money, and this isn't on our list, but but Philip saved some money on his computer by building one up from scratch, right? Yeah. You just figured what parts you needed. You put them together. You had John help you out a little bit on that, I think, didn't you? Yeah, well, I figured out the parts. I bought the parts, and I built the computer because it would cost more to have someone else buy it. Like, a lot more. It would cost, like, three four hundred dollars more to have someone else buy it and ship it and i'm like no yeah. that's not worth it i'll just do it yeah yeah so he saved money doing that and all of our kids like to get good deals on things you have a dedicated drawer for ketchup packets and soy sauce from takeout yeah we do and whenever we we buy stuff typically we'll have a lot of sauces so we'll have leftover stuff we can use at a later date. Yeah, we actually put them in separate cups. Like yep. we'll put the mustard in separate cups to keep it organized, the ketchup. And uh, yeah, that's fun to do. Uh, certainly a lot cheaper than having to buy it all the time at the store. And, you know, if you've got it left over, you might as well use it, keep it organized. Uh, your friends ask for financial advice knowing you're the frugal guru in the group. What do you think about that? Even at my age, my my friends still ask me from time to time uh, my my thoughts on this certain financial purchase. <laughs> All right, yeah, we have friends that might ask us, uh, "Do are you willing to do this, or would you do this, or would you do that?" Uh, they might, and if they see something nice in our home, they might ask us where we got it mm -hmm. and how we got it. Then we'll then we'll tell them. So yeah, I mean, once you know somebody that's really good at doing something, it's always good to seek out their advice, right? Mm -hmm. So because that other person has worked hard at it, it might save you some time. So yes to that one for sure. You reuse gift wrap so skillfully that your presents look like a work of art in repurposed paper. No, we've never reused gift wrap. <laughs> no, um, 
Uh, we uh, will buy it on sale after Christmas. We'll mm-hmm. find Hope will find it on sale somewhere, and she'll buy several rolls of it to use maybe two or three years later. It'll it'll keep for so long, and she'll get so much of it that we'll use it for quite a few years afterwards. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what I do when I'm wrapping something to save a little money on gift wrap. I'll use newspaper. Yep. I'll use I'll reuse old usable newspaper, and I'll try to find articles that match the situation. <laughs> Situation that that are equal with a birthday, or maybe that I can find the name of the person it's going to go to in the paper. Cut that out and put them on. Make it kind of fun. So yeah, so we definitely will save money on paper, but we don't really reuse it and rewrap stuff no. up into used paper. No. So I would say no to that one. Uh, number twenty-seven. You've calculated the exact mileage to make car trips worthwhile based on gas prices. <laughs> well, speak of the devil. How about that? We just talked about that a little bit yeah, ago. <laughs> yeah, we definitely do that, and we also try to find the most efficient ways to go. Yep. Uh, and and we'll use MapQuest and different things, or uh, or our uh, our inline car. Uh, device the GPS on the car to to get the best route so we're not wasting any time or energy or any driving getting from one place to another. Your home decor is a mix of hand-me-down furniture and thrift store treasures. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That I would say perfectly. Yeah. A- absolutely perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I have a bookcase from when I was growing up. We used to have World Book Encyclopedias mm-hmm. on it. I spent a lot of time as a child looking through those. In fact, even into high school, looking through those and enjoying reading those. We didn't have the internet. We had World Book, <laughs> you know, yeah. our encyclopedia set. Um, we like repurposing. I have some old clocks that, that we use, old radios that we have in the house. Uh, most of our furniture is purchased at a thrift store, mm-hmm. and we get a really good price on it. When James was working at a thrift store, we would get a little discount. We'd get it at half price. Yeah. And when Daniel worked there, they would give it to us at half price. So we ended up getting some really good deals on stuff. But I'm looking at a chair right across the room. We purchased uh, an old 19, I mean, an 1880s rocking chair for, I think it was like $45. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, an oak chair, really nice. And so I think furniture was made so much better anyway, a long time ago. Oh yeah, It's, definitely. it's worth having old furniture. Everything was made better a long time ago. And, yeah. And we've had a lot of furniture given to us. When somebody breaks up their house, uh, they'll call us and say, do you want to look at what we have? We're just going to throw it out and we'll look at something. We'll go, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We'll bring it home and, and use it. Absolutely yes to that one. Your favorite words are BOGO and two for one. No. I don't I, have any I, idea. I, what, I don't even know. <laughs> I know. I read that. I go, BOGO. <laughs> I have no idea. BOGO is buy one, get one. Oh. Free. That's what it is. I didn't know. I've never heard of the term. I hadn't heard of the term I, either. I, I hope had heard of it. So buy one, get one free. Uh, that's a good deal. I mean, if you can find a deal at a store where you can, basically you're getting 50% off of the price, that's fine. I'm not sure that I really look for deals like that. No. They're kind of hard to find. If you, if you come across them, though, and you need the item. The main thing for me in buying any item that's on sale is if I don't need it, it's not a bargain. If, if you don't need the item, it's not a bargain to you. You're just spending money you don't need to be spending. So if it's something you planned on buying in the first place, then buy one, get one free is a good deal. I wouldn't say yes to this for us. Your favorite no, words so are go-go and two for one. Uh, mine are, my, well, some of my favorite words are, it's free out to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's throwing that out. Yeah, let's go get that. <laughs> I'm more into doing that than I am buying one, getting one free. Yeah. Um, number 30, you've turned washing dishes into a water-saving competition. Um, A little bit, yeah. I think you try to, you try to fill up the area as with a, as much water as possible to the point that it's just enough that you need to cover a dish. Right. And when I'm rinsing them, I try to use as little as possible. Yep. So you get the item in, get it right under the water, turn the water off and put the item in the strainer. Now, here's what we do with our dishes, though. And I don't know if it saves a lot of money. It saves time. When we wash dishes, we put them in a strainer and let them air dry most of the time and not wipe them right away. We'll wipe them maybe... Oh, a couple hours later, mm-hmm. and there won't be much water on them, and then put them away. But uh, so I don't know if that saves a lot of money. We try not to use a lot of water though while we're doing yeah. dishes. Uh, we try to 
put maybe a third of the water into the dish pan. And then as the as you're rinsing, you can fill it up slowly with water. As you're, you're rinsing, you keep that water going into your dish pan, and then you're you're keeping the water up at a pretty good level because every time you pull a dish out, you pull some water out, yeah. and it drips down the sink and into the drain. So I would say technically, yes, uh, we do. We I don't think it's a competition. It's not a water saving competition, but we do try to save water when we do dishes. Mm -hmm. Your browser history is full of price comparison sites before making any purchase. Yeah, definitely. As far as online purchases go, mom will always cross, like check across different sites to make sure she's getting the best deal possible. Oh yeah. She'll spend the whole afternoon sometimes on an yeah. expensive item going through making sure she can find not only the best price on it, but the best deal for the company that's selling it and the model that you're looking at for that item. I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm buying a car, I'll take weeks and weeks at just researching the models that I'm looking for and I narrow it down to the model that our family can use and then I'll spend another two or three weeks just looking at that model in places that are around us maybe 40 miles from our home and what what can we do to get the best deal so it does pay to take some time and go online and do that so absolutely yes to that one Number 32, you've mastered the art at re-gifting without getting caught. Um, yeah, we've done, we've, done, we've done a fair amount of re-gifting, I think. You know, I don't find re-gifting a problem. You just have to make sure you know where the gift came from. Yeah. And you don't give it back to that person. So as long as you don't give it back to the person that gave it to you, you're, you're pretty good. I don't think of it as a thing about getting caught at. Because if somebody gives you an item, they're giving it to you to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. After you've been given an item, it's up to you to decide whether you're going to use it, resell it, uh, set it aside for a while, give it away to a good friend. Maybe they could use it more than you could. That's up to you. So I don't have a problem with re-gifting. I don't see it as an issue of getting caught. I don't, I don't see it from that standpoint mm -hmm. at all. Cause you just kind of, you just want to be careful not to offend the person that gave it to you by giving it back to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your ideal date night involves sharing a single dessert to split the cost. Uh, well, how, how do you feel about that one, Philip? I, uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> you haven't dated anybody yet, have Not you? yet, no. <laughs> would you Would you be willing to split a dessert to split the cost? To split the cost? Um, probably, yeah. Well, let me let me tell you about dates. If you're asking a girl on a date, you're not going to split the cost with her. That's going to break you up with that girl real fast. Because if a girl has to pay money in order to go out on a date with you, and you've asked her out. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Now, I never made Hope pay for anything when we dated. However, in home here, when we when we have a date night and we spend some time here at home, our date nights can consist of just pretty much watching a movie off the TV, enjoying our time together uh, down in the family room, maybe getting some popcorn to eat or, or something to munch on. Uh, we don't split the cost. We just split the time. We take the time between us. So in this one... I would never split the cost ever on a date. I never made Hope pay for anything that I asked her out on. She didn't pay any money. I just wouldn't do that. It's not kosher. So I would say no on that one. 34, you carry a big purse full of snacks into the theater. Well, yeah. Do you do that? When well, you the movie? when uh, when Aunt Mary takes us, she would always oh, she, she brings, would always do that. Oh, she does. Yeah, so she'll bring some food into the theater. Well, she'll at least bring like a couple cans of soda and some stuff with us from like Dollar Tree, and I I still do that. I still bring stuff from home. Oh, okay, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, Hope and I don't go to the theater. We just yeah. don't go out, we don't go out to movies. I can't see paying money to go to a movie when it eventually is going to come out as a DVD or a Blu-ray or it's going to be on TV or it's going to be on one of those sharing networks uh, on the internet. I just don't see a point in going to the theater. And Hope has trouble sitting through movies. She gets motion sick mm -hmm. at a movie theater. It's just how, how, her, how she visualizes things. It makes her motion sick. So she really doesn't enjoy going to the movie theater. So once again, we watch movies at home on our TV set. And I love watching DVDs and Blu-rays anyway. Uh, that is the way that I do it. We don't worry about 
carrying snacks into a movie theater. So I would say for us, no. But for you, yes. I do, yeah. You do that. Okay. Um, 38. Your idea of a tech upgrade is buying a refurbished gadget. Yeah. I mean, if you can get it in good enough condition, it's definitely fully worth it. Why not? Why have to spend the money on an item just because it's new and in the box? Yeah. How long does it stay new and in the box? About 30 about, seconds, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I was growing up, I always had items that were several models older than what was popular. And I saved a lot of money. When people were listening to CDs, I had a reel-to-reel -reel player running. Eventually, we bought a CD player. But I was usually a couple uh, technology places behind where everybody else was, and I didn't care. It didn't bother me at mm -hmm. all. I loved AM radio. When FM came out, I listened quite a bit to AM, eventually switched over to FM, that kind of thing. So if you keep up all the time with the technology advances, though, you'll be spending a lot of money. Yeah. I didn't even get a cell phone until about a year ago. Yeah. I didn't have a cell phone. I had one from work. And it worked fine. They let me use it for personal calls, as long as they were local calls and didn't cost them any extra money. I could use it for that. Um, but I didn't see any point in it. And, I, and when I bought a phone, I bought a used phone, not a brand new one. Yep. So we still, you know, exercise the saving money idea from that. And I think that's, uh, that's something that's in here, too. Your favorite restaurant is one with the unlimited breadsticks or complimentary chips and salsa or peanuts. Or peanuts. Yeah. Or peanuts. Yeah, at all the time. I mean, if you dine in at Navanti's, I mean, you get free bread. Free bread. Yeah, yeah. the bread is awesome. Their bread homemade so bread. Good. It's sweet bread. Oh, my gosh. It's like candy. Mm -hmm. That stuff is so good. It is worth going there. If you ever, if you ever come to the Midwest, Avanti's, you want to keep that in mind. Absolutely. Definitely one of our favorite places. But once again, Hope and I really don't go out to eat very much. You no. go out more than we do. I do go out more than you yeah, do. Philip goes out with friends all the time. You go just, out to... Just chick went out the other day with a friend of Avanti's. <laughs> all right. Very good. Very good. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I did that when I was your age, too. Yeah. Your travel bucket list consists of destinations where you have friends with spare rooms. So you only travel to places where a friend has a room free for you. What do you think of I, that? Uh, I think to an extent, if it's somewhere you want to go, might as well, but also, no. Do we do we practice that? Have you ever, no, do you I, don't, I don't think so. I don't <clears throat> the think only, so. The only time I can remember doing something a little bit like this was we had a family, a uh, real nice family, homeschooling family. Uh, James became a... Uh, uh, a pen pal with one of their sons, they invited us up to their home and they live up in northern Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And we went up there and we enjoyed it so much that we went there for several years, every year afterwards. Now, we didn't do it just because it was cheap because we would be at their house and we would help them with some of their, their food costs. And we didn't just go up there and live off of them. Um, we did it because we loved the family, and mm -hmm. the, it was so fun to be with the, the family. But when we went to the Smoky Mountains, we didn't look for people's no. houses to stay at. We stayed at the Airbnb homes and really enjoyed it. That's where you save up your money. Because you're frugal, you have some money in order to spend a nice vacation. So I, I don't think that we... Um, we really do that. I don't think I don't think mm -hmm. that one would be a yes for us. We don't look for places to go just because somebody could give us a free place to stay. You barter skills instead of paying for services. Um, yeah, we've definitely. definitely done this in the past. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I've done that. We had a friend of ours that wanted to do our will. He was an attorney. And I traded videotaping their wedding for him doing our will. So that was trading services. And we've done that many, many times. So that can be a, a good benefit. And why not? Especially if you know people that can do really good work. You've mastered the art of making your own cleaning supplies from household items. Household items. No, I don't we, think so. We've definitely not done that. Not that I can think of. No, we buy things at the store to clean with mm -hmm. good quality cleaning supplies, and we don't just make do with stuff. Now you can do that. You can use uh, alcohol as a cleaner. You can use all kinds of different things as as a cleaner that mm -hmm. you buy at the store. There's nothing wrong with that. But we don't typically do that. We go oh. ahead and, and buy what we need and then use that. Um, 
Hope has made laundry detergent homemade from she different, has, yeah. different things, but she had to go get the material. She, we mm-hmm. didn't have it in our home. She had to go buy a certain kind of soap and certain kinds of materials in order to put it together. She did save quite a bit of money and made some good laundry detergent by doing that. So I would say no to that one. Number 40, you've hosted a clothing swap party to refresh your wardrobe without spending a dime. So you go to a friend's house and you chain you trade clothes with them. No. No. We've never done that once. So no, no. No. Uh, no. We'll go to Salvation Army or Goodwill or any thrift store and and get clothing that way. I think this is a, a Goodwill shirt. It doesn't uh, it doesn't do too good on the pockets anymore. <laughs> but but it's a, I think it's a Goodwill shirt. I love the shirt. Uh, you can get good clothes that way, but we don't trade our clothes with friends. No. I don't think we do that. So we're going to tabulate and add up to see whether we come out as frugal people based on this study or not. So we added up the no's. How many did we say no to out of the 40? And we came up with 12 items that we said no to. And so we figured that into 40, that becomes 76% yes. Mm -hmm. 76% is more than half. So we are frugal according to this study, but not super frugal. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's it's just all how you define it. They defined it in a very specific way that didn't really fit the way we do a lot of things. And that might be the case for you too. This was just for fun. It was just a fun exercise. And you got to see Philip a little bit on camera, who's never been on camera before. True. Well, but, not in your camera. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's true. But Philip and I have done a lot of bike riding together, and he's he's really kind of my buddy. We spend a lot of time together. We like to watch TV, yeah. old, old science fiction <laughs> programming together, and all kinds of stuff. So we watched the Star Trek not too long ago. We did, yeah. Yeah, so that was fun. <clears throat> So, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. And if you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe. And if you have some ideas on what you would do differently on some of these, put them in the comment field. We like to hear from you. We enjoy hearing anything that you guys say in the comments. Now, if you're looking for some real frugal habits, we have done a video on it and we have it right over there.